So this was the um, Authorscopy Association of North America, the other double A and A I was mentioning, uh, working with our, our good friends at Adage. So uh, yeah. again, you had that same thing, right? About and Chat GPT does that to us all the time. We've dabbled in it, and it's like the nurses. I'm like, no, try it again. Yeah, no, yeah. that's not it. So that's great. So anyway, uh, here's the other double A, uh, and they're talk about uh, revitalizing your online presence. Um, with a quick and effective uh, website redesign strategy. So turn it over to Christine and Jay. No. All right. Thanks, Kevin. So yes, we're talking about revitalizing your online presence quickly. So sometimes you don't have um, the time to put together an RFP and a committee and see demos. Uh, we're talking about doing this pretty quick and dirty as a, kind of an MVP approach to everything. So my name is Jake Tui. I'm the director of the association practice at Adage, third Jake of the day. And uh, <laughs> I'm Christine Noble. I'm the second Christine of the day. And I'm the chief operations and business development officer for the Arthroscopy Association of North America. So real quickly about Adage, our tagline is technology advancing purpose. And it's because we work with almost 90% of our clients are nonprofits and associations. So we believe that we help Use technology, help our clients use technology to advance their purpose and mission. Um, real quickly, our services are everything in the digital life cycle of, of a, a web project. So strategy, branding, brand expansion, UX, UI design, technology, which is CMS integrations, um, quality assurance, um, and then finally analytics. We talk about continuous improvement. We've heard that a couple of times today. So that's something that we believe very strongly. We work with associations of all sizes and we've done projects for that are multi-year digital transformations to simple content strategy projects. But uh, we've been working with associations for about 14 years and today we are talking about Anna. Yep. So uh, the Arthroscopy Association is a professional medical society of orthopedic surgeons that specialize in minimally invasive orthopedic surgery. Uh, we have, we're actually nearing 6,000 members. Um, and uh, we have been working with Adage for a little bit now. So this is the Anna story of the saga, <laughs> the as saga. you called it. But uh, just like a reminder of what the, uh, the topic is. I wanted to quickly talk about what a typical process looks like for anybody that's done a web project before. Uh, usually it's about one to three months, discovery, visioning, workshops, building personas, user journeys, getting into UX and UI, prototyping, getting designs that look good and are tested. Uh, getting into development and integrations. And all in all, this process usually takes six to 12 months, sometimes more. But that was not the case. With yeah, I would have loved that timeline. Um, <laughs> so my uh, headache, I mean, project started on January 18th when I got a nice phone call from my CEO and she told me to sit down. And uh, she said that the Anna leadership needed to expedite the website development. And I said, okay, what do, you, what do you mean by expedite exactly? And she said, well, we've, we've got a date in mind and it's, it's May 1st. And so, and that would be the uh, annual meeting of Anna shortly after that. So uh, the timeline you're looking at is, is quite abbreviated. So the first thing I did was gathered those internal requirements. What, what exactly do you need? What are you looking for? I need particulars. Um, and then I need help. And so um, my forever Valentine, uh, Jake here, <laughs> I was introduced to him on Valentine's Day and he uh, was able to get me through this project. Uh, and so we really kicked everything off with his team and my team on uh, February 24th. So what aided us in this process was a recent rebrand. So uh, Anna, which is how we say our acronym, went through a rebranding process in 2019, 2020. Uh, and out of that came a very robust branding guidelines document. And so I can't emphasize that enough. If you're going through a rebranding, get a document that acts as guidelines for everyone in your organization and you use it with your partners too. Uh, it's, it's really quite a guidepost for a lot of different processes. Um, like I said, I expedited those requirements gatherings. I got to make sure we're all on the same page. I have to make sure I have a good understanding of what everyone needs. And then the next thing, and I've heard it a few times, is managing those expectations. So besides saying that launching a whole new website in, in four months, three months is impossible, um, I needed them to know that it, you know it's not going to be a website that looks like it's been around for 10 years. This is going to be a new website. It's going to need some work. It's going to be a constant developing. There's going to be phases to it. And those were things I needed to continue to communicate. Um, and then what was really helpful for us 
Uh, sometimes people aren't able to articulate exactly what they're looking for, especially in design and, and websites. And so I said, what websites do you like? Show me the associations that you're really liking. What, what navigation are you enjoying? What's easy? What pictures do you like? And so I was able to kind of take out of those conversations exactly what they might be looking for. So, and that takes us to those goals. So I was able to narrow it down for Jake and I said, okay, we've got navigation is key. They've, they've got some particular uh, pieces to the navigation that are um, very arthroscopy focused. We needed a residence section, we needed a fellow section. Uh, the look and feel, they were able to give me those examples, which was really helpful. So I said, okay, we've got this modular look, it's clean line, it's not busy. Uh, and then it's content. So, okay, SEO, got to rewrite the old content, got to make sure all the links work. And then, of course, the UX. We have to make sure that not only does it look good, and I've checked all the boxes of every person on my presidential line and my CEO, but also that a regular orthopedic surgeon is going to be able to navigate through that website easily. So it we was modular design. It was simple. It, was, it had a big picture on the front when you get to it, because a lot of our websites have that. Um, and But one of the key pieces was that that website also needed to integrate with IMS, our AMS. So real quickly, when we talk about the CMS, we have uh, adage offers two options. So we like to have kind of uh, two different options for different needs of our clients. We don't like to be too many things to too many people, but uh, we landed on Umbraco for this, this implementation. What things we like about it, it's very flexible. You can build with it. Intuitive interface. Uh, it's secure. It's .NET product. Um, very scalable and simple licensing. So there's no... Uh, no real barrier to entry for that. We actually I put this resource on there if anybody's interested in uh, some of the content that we've put out about um, Brocco and how it compares. But what we like about it is that it's very customizable. So you can build what you want. So you can build templates and uh, content blocks from scratch. But in this case, we don't have we didn't have the luxury of that time. So uh, the theme option is is what what we went with. So what what I mean by a theme option is that you get you, know, you get a, a template which is kind of a blank slate. And then you get all these different modules in here. And I'll show some examples of, of the work with, with Anna, but this goes back to the, the branding. So luckily we had the branding information there. So you get things like, um, just like content blocks, like, uh, like you see here, an accordion. An accordion can be used for many things, for benefits, FAQs, program information. Um, it can be implemented very quickly with, with a template like that. Forms, everybody has forms on their website for their... Um, for their AMS, for marketing automation purposes, personalization, text widgets, WYSIWYGs, everybody needs that on site. Uh, pod headlines, this is great for, for things like about events. Text and image, everybody likes more imagery. That was one of the kind of requirements. And then uh, you see like the tabs at the top of here that's it's navigating on a page uh, under the navigation. And then of course, imagery, um, different pods for those. And then some things that we haven't even gotten to yet, nope. which is just resources, uh, latest from feed, which you, use, you can use for, for blogs or, or any of the resources that you may offer, uh, and then video. So at the end of the day. There she is. There she is. Um, How long? Two and a half months? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it, it was well received. So I'm here and I'm still employed with Anna. And so I think that's a good sign, right? So something went right. Um, and we're here talking to you, so I must like Jake a lot. Um, and, and actually, we launched, and it did great. Everyone said this was exactly what they were looking for. So honestly, this couldn't have been a better situation. Uh, how many times have we launched something, and you get up there, and your CEO is like, yep, that didn't quite hit exactly what I expected. So we held our breath and bit off all of our nails, and it actually was a home run. Talk about some lessons and takeaways. Yeah. So constantly manage those expectations. I was always talking to my leadership. I was very open with my CEO about this is lofty. This isn't something that would typically cross my desk. This usually takes 12 months. Uh, so always making sure that a communication was open about expectations. Prioritization is key. So one thing I did with my team, I identified the key players on my team. And I said, you know, typically we have a business standard of 48 to 72 hours that you need to respond to an email, right? Uh, no, this was, you get an email from Jake and his team, it needs instant response. And luckily I had buy-in from my entire IT team that they were fantastic and they understood that that priority was key. Um, get ahead of those major markers. So when you are handed the timeline, look ahead of yourself several steps. Uh, that will help you and only serve you better down the line. 
we've heard about great communication, but I want to take it one step further. And there's something I did with Jake that I think was really important. I was so transparent with him. I was extremely candid with exactly what the goal was, what was on the line and what we needed. Uh, so not only was I communicating, but I, I couldn't have been more forthcoming with you about what we needed. Get your graphics. That takes a lot of time. We were very lucky to have a talented in-house graphic designer. So uh, that was great. But sometimes you're working with a third party and you need to get those cooking almost from the beginning of the project. Make timely decisions. Sometimes we like to go, oh, let me get back to my team. Let me talk to my CEO. Let me take this past leadership. I had no time to do that. So it was a lot of gut instinct making the best decision based on the information that I collected from leadership at the time and just making those in the moment decisions to move forward. Don't underestimate content pop. Oh my gosh. So we decided that content was going to be our biggest beast in this entire thing because we had to rewrite every single page. So we started content pop from that February 14th date that I talked to Jake. We started immediately rewriting those pages, mapping it out. What did the menuing look like? site mapping. We started from the beginning and I can't stress that enough that it's a, it's a huge beast. So start it early. And then a website's never done. I've also heard that a little bit too here. Uh, we're, it's launched, it's beautiful. And I'm, we still have projects cooking. Uh, we will be working with Jake for a long time. He's a great partner and we are going to be with him, whether you like it or not for a while, <laughs> continuing to revamp and add in those AI add-ons and, you know, incorporating more video and SEO and all that other stuff. And we're, it's going to constantly be in development until the next time I'm approached and told that we need to do another website revamp. Any other lessons or takeaways things that you would reflect on and share? Um, not really, just make sure that you have a great partner. Um, you know, we, we were lucky, very, very lucky. Um, but make sure that you've got the right people in the room, you've identified those right players on your team, and that you have everyone's full attention and that everyone understands the priority of the project. I have time for any questions that might have come up, but. Yep. Um, so one question here is, were you able to get member or stakeholder feedback to uh, influence your design and how did you do that? Yeah, during the uh, requirements gathering, I was able to tap a few members outside of the leadership, because sometimes that's skewed. You know, the leadership is probably the same kind of age bracket, looking for the same kind of information at a particular point in their practice. And so it was important to branch out. Now, I didn't have enough time to do focus groups and to survey my entire membership, which would have been great. Um, but I was able to pick off a few members and just get some quick feedback from them uh, in order to, to add that into the mix. Great, and another one is, um, it's it sounds like you were uh, you changed your uh, decision making process uh, instead of socializing and getting some input from your your colleagues. It sounded like uh, you had to make those decisions in your staff. So, what kind of support did you get so you were able to do that rapid fire response? Yeah, I, so I'm lucky to have an amazing CEO in Laura Downs, and she has all the confidence in me whether well, that's good or bad. Um, and so uh, she gave me that autonomy that I needed to move that project quickly. And that was one of the stipulations when I was managing the expectations was that's great, we can move this along, but I don't have time to ask you for your feedback or to take it to leadership. So it was something that I needed to be really honest from the beginning, you're gonna have to trust me. Great. Any other questions from our audiences? Um, So there is a slight delay, so that's why I'm waiting to make sure. No, that was awesome. All right, great. Okay. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody. Thank you very much. <laughs>